Hey guys, today we are going to create a LinkedIn lead gen form and I'm gonna go over the basics of what that is and hopefully give you some do's and don'ts. Uh, so let me go into here. Now, the first place that you're gonna wanna go, um, actually, let me show you what a LinkedIn lead gen form even looks like. Uh, let me find one here real quick. All right, we have found a our first lead gen form. Uh, so Epsilon is running this ad here, and this is what it looks like. So on the surface, it kind of looks like a single image ad. It has the same intro text ability uh, image. You have the headline, the destination URL, uh, but the main difference is that the call to action on lead gen forms, there's two main differences. The call to action is usually download, attend, whatever, uh, has different call to action. And then when you click it, instead of it sending you to a destination URL. Oops, I lied. This is a single image ad. Uh, so normally, if it was a lead gen form, it would pop up in feed with a form. Let me show you a real one. I got fooled. Okay, here is an actual lead gen form, for sure. I tested it this time. So again, you have the intro text, you have the image, you have a headline, destination URL, um, and the call to action. But when you click it, instead of it sending you to the final destination URL, it has a pop-up lead gen form. So this is what the actual lead gen form looks like. And the cool thing about it, I guess, is that it auto-populates the information. So the whoever made this form selected what information they wanted, which was email address, first name, last name, job title, and company name. So the only thing the user has to do um, is hit submit. The other things you can customize is you have, I think this is just pulled in from the company page banner. You have this right here, and then you do have a description usually, but it doesn't look like they even use that, which is perfectly fine because at this point, you don't want to add too much that might make them not submit. You kind of want to keep it as simple as possible because they clicked and they should already intend. So let's go into the back end and I'll show you how to set one of these bad boys up, and then I'll give you uh, some actionable tips and tricks of what to do and what not to do. Uh, so in your account, you can go up to account assets and they keep changing the UI. Uh, so the other week it was on the left, uh, but now it's back to the old one. If you click up here and you do um, lead gen forms, whew, I thought I was gonna have trouble finding it. You can then create a form and it looks like this. So let me go over, I'll put this over here. So you have the form name and we're just gonna call this one testing. You set the language you have the header so this is an example headline offer so as you saw in the other one they did not fill out the offer details and that's actually not a terrible strategy you want these to be pretty simple the ad the intro the headline the call to action should do most of the talking for you you don't want to make the mistake of talking them out of anything once they open the form um, and if everything else was clear, they know that they're opening a form and they should fully intend to submit. So really, you just don't want to screw it up. Uh, you'll want to link to your privacy policy. So every usually every website will have a privacy policy. Uh, so you can just grab that URL. Even if it's unpublished, uh, you can find it and you can put that. Or they have free privacy policy makers where you can input domain and, and it'll shoot one up for you and you can grab that link. Um, here's an optional box for privacy policy, whatever. And over here, you can see how it would start to shape up. So it, yes, it pulls in this banner from our LinkedIn company page, the logo as well. Uh, and then this is the headline that I'd be customizing here. Uh, this would be the text here. You don't have a ton of space, um, but it would just go into here. So actually it's not a terrible idea. I haven't really done that too much, but just... say buy my crap I just want to see it like flushed out over there so having it just like that I mean they should know what they're getting themselves into okay the next section is lead details uh, customize so all of this you can customize by default it's first name last name email address you can change it to be a company a work email and you can get rid of that if you want so I would say for that they usually it's not going to be auto filled anymore. So that would be, you know, an extra point of friction that might reduce the number of leads you get, but it would improve the quality. And I think that's the give and take. Depending on your target, depending on your offer, and depending what you have on the back end to nurture these, 
you know, do you want to create some some intentional additional friction or do you want this to be as easy as possible? And then you have kind of a machine that's going to, you know, help nurture these process, these whatever. So there's a lot of other stuff you can add industry company size. Most of these will pre-populate um, or you can add custom questions. So you can ask your own whatever multiple choice that just again do you want to make it a little more complicated and do you want to create friction and get less leads but higher quality or are you okay getting more leads that might be lower quality because you know you have a system to you know to work out uh, everything on the back end next would be custom checkbox if you want to go that route uh, and then you get to customize the confirmation so after they hit submit you know you can have a little Thank you so much. Um, you then can have a destination URL. I'm going to do impactable.com. I should probably send them to my paid ads page. Um, and then you can customize that little button over here where it's visit company, learn more, view now, download now. So depending on if it was a checklist or a resource you promised, or if you just say, you know, in the meantime, um, if you want to learn more, visit our website and blah, 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 you can make a little note. And then this will pop up afterwards and they will um, get that form. So I would say, or they'll go wherever you want them to go. So I would say that uh, if you do lead gen forms and you have a checklist, what normally people do is then they use Zapier to create the workflow and say, when there's a new lead gen form submitted from LinkedIn, uh, please trigger this workflow in Clavio or Active Campaign or just send them a Gmail or whatever. So then it's it's automatically connected. Otherwise, they just kind of pull in here and you'd have to like manually um, download them. So here's our, like our newsletter signups. I could just click this and I could download all the leads. Uh, I mean, I guess you could do that on a weekly basis, uh, but that's kind of archaic. Uh, I would say get with Zapier and just create an automated workflow. Uh, let's see. Other than that, my best advice is to probably not run lead gen forms as a cold campaign. And the reason for that being is that if you run these uh, as a cold campaign, um, they've never been to your website. It's their first touch ever coming in contact with you. So I think those traditionally are, are going to be a lot weaker leads. Um, so you, if you're then nurturing those with an, a really nice email sequence, then okay, cool, that works. If you're trying to pass those off or make contact yourself following up with email and phone, uh, that can be a really weak lead and a waste of time and resources um, because, again, they don't know who you are or what you offer. They don't know what you're about. You promise them a checklist, and then you're trying to, like, make personal contact with them. So what I would suggest is cold campaign, your very first touch with them, send them to your website. Probably no hope of converting, but if it's B2B, there never was. Uh, it takes trust, credibility, building, you know, expertise around your subject matter. So first touch, just introduce yourself pretty much, get them to the website, let them look around, get to know who you are, what you offer. And then on the retargeting layer, if you have an ebook, a checklist, or um, I like to use, the only thing I use lead gen forms is for newsletter signups. Um, I retarget them with, uh, and I can show you here. I retarget them with, let me show you mine. Let's see. I retarget them with ads. Let's see which one has the most um, this month. Let's see, leads. All right, this one's the most. I'm getting leads at fourteen thirty-five. Oh, some of these are getting $6 per leads. Ooh, $30 per lead. Let's shut this bad boy off. Well, I should probably look at lifetime before I start showing stuff off. Um, but, and this isn't going to show very well in desktop if I clicked on it, but... I like to use vertical ones um, for this retargeting one. And here's here's a nice desktop one that's been working well. The impactable newsletter, no. And it has subscribe, clear call to action, a couple of what you're gonna be getting. And then when it pops up, it is really simple. I actually reduce the friction. Actually, honestly, um, given now what I know, I should probably get rid of this and just say, you know, join now or submit. And then it's just the email, super low friction. In fact, I can remove a little more, make it the simplest form you've ever seen. And I wonder if the cost per lead would go down. Uh, so this is how we use them. But again, I would say don't use it in the cold, use it in the retargeting after they've already been exposed to you. And then um, I would 
probably just test, 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 try different formats, try different intros, images, and see what works best for you.